Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between REST and HTTP product offerings in API Gateway. So in terms of the agenda of this video, at first we're going to talk about a little bit of a background. Then we're going to get into some of the benefits of using HTTP over REST. From there, we're going to go over the feature differences between them. And then finally, I'm going to give you some advice on when you should use one or the other. Keep in mind, this is a two-part series. So in the next section, I'm going to show you how to create a HTTP API that uses a post and get endpoint backed by a Lambda function. So stay tuned to that. So let's just jump right into it and talk about the background. So some background info. So it all started in 2015 when REST APIs were introduced into API Gateway. Uh, and REST APIs, I'm sure everyone is familiar with what they are, but let's just quickly go over them. So they consist of resources and verbs. So resources are things like customers and verbs are things like get, post, um, and delete. Over the years, the API Gateway team has introduced a whole bunch of useful features that integrate with other AWS services, things like Lambda integration and other AWS service integration, such as DynamoDB, S3, all those uh, very popular services. But the problem with REST APIs is they tend to be a little bit heavy in the sense that they come with a lot of bells and whistles, but if you're not interested in using any of those extra bells and whistles, you just want a very lightweight API to maybe call some function on the back end or call a database or something, uh, you suffer some latency overhead as a result. So uh, not always the best choice, but no real other option existed in terms of API hosting using API Gateway. So this is all you really had to work with. Now, moving forward a couple years into the future, in 2018, the WebSocket APIs were also introduced. So WebSockets allow for full duplex communication between the client and the server. Uh, very typical to see WebSockets for use in things like uh, online games or web chat applications where you're pushing messages between the two different clients or client and server uh, over short periods of time. So one of the things to be aware of with WebSockets is that it is connection based. That's how the messages travel between uh, server and client. Uh, that has some pros and cons. So in terms of the cons, it means that if you have a spotty connection or very poor uh, latency to your server, you're not going to get the expected behavior as opposed to someone that has a very good connection. So that's always a trade-off. Um, the thing with WebSockets as well is that they're not always the right choice um, and they are use case specific. So it doesn't make sense to use WebSockets if you're not going to require real-time communication between client and server. Um, so not always the right choice for you. Now, up until then, these were the only real two options that you had in terms of API Gateway, but come along into 2020 and that's when HTTP APIs were introduced. So HTTP APIs support resource or verb, which is in other words, REST APIs, or RPC, which stands for remote procedure calls, which I am a little bit more in favor of or more of a fan of. Um, but I suppose that REST APIs also support RPC. You can configure them that way, but I don't think that was what they were originally designed for. Now, since then, they have been adding a whole bunch of different features into HTTP APIs. They did come with a subset of functionalities when compared to REST. Uh, however, they have communicated very clearly that HTTP APIs are pretty much the future and they're going to continue to invest in them. So parity is coming. They do come with a whole bunch of other advantages as well, which I want to talk about in the upcoming slides. But you should know that the whole premise of using HTTP APIs is that they are lightweight. Um, they're not meant to be super heavy bulky. Uh, they're meant to be fast, cheap, reliable. Um, so that's really what they're tailored for. However, if you really want to have that REST functionality uh, with all the bells and whistles that come with it, then you may want to use REST APIs. APIs um, in the vanilla form. Now let's move on to some of the pros now of using HTTP APIs over REST. Uh, so the first one is in terms of speed. So there is less network overhead. So inherently these HTTP APIs are going to be faster in terms of how much faster. Well, they're about 60% faster at the 99th percentile, which is a pretty big improvement. Uh, speed is one of the main benefits of using HTTP over REST APIs in API Gateway. Uh, the next big addition or big feature that makes things a little bit more attractive to use HTTP is in terms of pricing. Now, over on the left, we have the REST pricing model, which we can see here. Let's just get my mouse here. Um, so for the first 333 million requests, that costs you about $3.50. They have this kind of scaled pricing model where the more requests uh, that you make, the lower the price goes. Um, so it's pretty reasonable. Over 20 billion, it's going to cost you $1.51 per 1 million, uh, which I do think is reasonable. Uh, if we compare that over on the right now to HTTP, uh, we can see that the first 300 million are only a dollar and everything after that is 90 cents. So not a very uh, steep drop off. However, if you compare, you know, 300 million for a dollar, 
first 333 million to 350, that's over a three times reduction in cost. Uh, so definitely worth it in terms of the cost perspective. So if you turn that into percentages, what it actually translates to is a 70% reduction, which is mind blowing to think of. Uh, so for those of you that have a pretty steep API gateway bill um, and you wanna reduce that, it may make complete sense to switch over to HTTP in the coming future. So I want to go over now some of the differences between the features. Um, this isn't a complete and exhaustive list, but these are some of the features that I use the most and what I think are the most important. I'll leave a link in the description section so you can get a full snapshot of what the differences are between them. Uh, but let's just go over what I put in front of us here. So over on the left column, we have the feature itself and then how it compares for REST and HTTP. So for the first one, usage plans and API keys. Uh, usage plans allow you to uh, set quotas for your API. So maybe you only want it to be called a couple thousand times. You can set a quota there. And API keys allow you to assign uh, keys to specific clients that they use as part of their API requests. So using API keys, you can achieve some pretty granular throttling based on your clients. So for example, if you have one particular client and you only want them to call your API at a very low rate, you can assign a rate that corresponds to their API key. Whereas if you have another client that maybe pays your premium package for your application, you can give them unlimited, things like that. Now, in terms of how it compares between REST and HTTP, it is a function of REST or a feature of REST rather. But as of today, it is not a feature of HTTP. So keep that in mind. This may be a non-starter for some of you. The second feature is in terms of API caching. So if you want to cache your responses to serve them up faster, uh, then unfortunately that is only provided as a feature for REST and not yet for HTTP. Uh, the third one isn't that big of a deal, but I use it quite a bit, so I wanted to throw it in here, which is testing slash mocking. Through the old console, you were able to kind of invoke test events against your API gateway endpoint to make sure everything was wired up correctly and working correctly, and also mocking certain dependencies that is only offered through REST and not HTTP. And finally, request validation and transformation. Uh, request validation allows you to essentially say that if someone calls this API and this route within the API uh, needs to contain this particular key with a particular value potentially, um, and transformation corresponds to if you get a request that contains a key um, and a corresponding value, you can map that to a new key, maybe for some special use case that you have. Now those uh, are only offered through REST and not HTTP, but it isn't all bad. There are some features that are offered through HTTP that are not offered through REST, and that's my last two of them here, spoiler alert. So native OIDC or OpenID Connect, which is a key function of OAuth 2.0 uh, for authentication, that is offered right out of the gate for HTTP and not for REST. However, this can be accomplished in your REST APIs using Lambda authorizers, but it does just require some extra work on your part. And the last one, ALB integrations or uh, application load balancer. So application load balancer is not supported for REST, but it is supported for HTTP. This is very useful if you have a whole bunch of different services that rely on application load balancing, things like EC2, ECS, and other infrastructure-based uh, services can easily integrate with uh, application load balancers. So if you're using API Gateway plus uh, application load balancers, it's gonna work right out of the gate with HTTP. So these are some of the key differences, but keep in mind, like I said before, feature parity is coming. So all of the red crosses that you see on the right hand side here under the HTTP section, hopefully in about six months or maybe a year or so, they will all turn to green check marks. Uh, we do know that uh, AWS is going to continue to invest in HTTP functionalities. So I did want to tell you about a couple other features that are good to know about uh, the new experience. So the first one is that you get a brand new console experience if you use the new HTTP APIs. Uh, so in terms of what it looked like before, if you were building a REST API, uh, this is the old screen, pretty dated, pretty ugly. Um, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. It works. Everyone knows how it works. So um, this is just what the style looked like. Now, in terms of the new experience, it is much more consistent with the direction of style that AWS is going in the future. Uh, you see this all over the place. In places like S3, DynamoDB, they're really switching over to this new style set. Uh, so you get that new style for HTTP APIs. So some other good news in terms of switching over from REST to HTTP. Maybe you watch this video and you're like, I want to cash in on these uh, lower latencies and this 70% cost reduction. Uh, so AWS has thought of you, so they have make it, made this a little bit easier. So they do offer you the ability to export your API definitions using Swagger slash OpenAPI. Uh, and you essentially can download a template file of the definition of all your APIs 
in your Rust um, suite of APIs. From there, you can easily import them into the new HTTP APIs that you can create. This is all done through a wizard in the console, uh, but I suppose you can also do this programmatically if you want. And it's a largely one-to-one -one changeover, but not every feature is supported. So feature discrepancy will be highlighted. So for instance, if you're moving over from REST to HTTP and you're trying to import a functionality that is not supported in HTTP as of yet, uh, they will highlight that to you so that at least you know that something is not gonna work right out of the gate and you can you know, make an educated decision after the fact. So in terms of what this looks like in the console, it's very easy. There's just an import button that you click and follow a wizard. Uh, and it's pretty much all she wrote. So in terms of the TLDR here, when should I choose what? It's a pretty simple rule and AWS has made it very, very uh, easy for us to decide. So basically use HTTP every time, except when the feature isn't supported. So HTTP offers a whole slew of benefits, including lower cost, including lower latencies and some added functionalities. They're gonna to continue to invest in it to get up to par with the current REST offerings. Uh, so essentially if something isn't offered in HTTP, that's probably the only reason that you have to go with REST. However, if HTTP supports everything that you're trying to use and there's no key functionality that's missing, definitely go with HTTP. So in part two of this video, I'm going to show you how to create a HTTP API with a post and get endpoints. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.